Namaste. Today is the third day of August 2022 and the 150th year of Sri Aurobindo's birth. We are here to do the life divine with our beloved Ranga. And we are on page page 328 beginning with the paragraph, Our Fundamental Cognition of the Absolute. We will do what we normally do. We will make a brief summary of the previous chapter, uh, sorry, the paragraph, so that we have the sense of continuity of what he is saying. So, he is saying the previous para. The overmind consciousness, which is just one plane below the supermind. It's a last plane of the mental regions, and below over the supermind, uh, over the overmind, you go into the supermind. The overmind consciousness cannot give us the solution we are seeking. So, what is the solution we are seeking for the problem? We want to know the origin of existence, the origin of the universe and we also want to solve the problem of the dualities. There are dualities but we want to see oneness. What is one single origin? Because we have started from the Advaita philosophy. The one, only one single truth. So, the overmind cannot give you that solution. That's what he's saying. The truth has to be found in the plane above the overmind which is the supermind. Then he says, but our mind, the normal human mind, is a half-developed consciousness and is in ignorance and does not see the reality. It sees only the end results, the forms of the universe. The process of making the forms, the origin and the execution of the forms, it does not see. It sees only the end forms. We feel that that's only reality. Actually, it's the end result of the formation of the universe. The forms in the universe. The supermind, on the contrary, sees the origin of the universe and understands the total harmony from which all the forms in the cosmos originate. We see the origin and also the end result. The end result being the universe. The one issues out of itself, into itself, all the many that are latent in it. The universe is nothing but a self-expression of the supreme reality. That's what he's saying. Just like a the painting is the result of whatever is latent in a painter or the poem is latent in the poet and he expresses it. That's exactly what the universe is. The universe is an expression of the supreme reality. That is the reason why everything in the physical world has some distant link with the, super, the supreme reality. This is what the many other philosophers deny. They say that there is no connection between the supreme reality and the physical world. There is no reality, so therefore we have to go there. But Srimdu's philosophy hinges on this, that there is a connection and that connection is also bridgeable. Even if there is a connection, some philosophies say there is a connection, but it is, you have to go there only to get the divine. Okay? And the the first, the Mayavada philosophy, the Buddhist philosophy, they say that there is a gulf. There is the illusion and the unreality and there is a reality on top and it cannot be bridged. You, The two will be eternally separate. Sri Ramadha, of course, does not agree. There is a connection and there is a link and you can, through yogic processes and growth of consciousness, go from the lowest to the highest. And that's what he calls the evolution. Evolution of the individual as well as evolution, universal evolution. Okay? So, after this, we will start reading the paragraph that we have to read today. Our fundamental cognition of the Absolute, our substantial spiritual experience of it, 
is the intuition or the direct experience of an infinite and eternal existence an infinite and eternal consciousness an infinite and eternal delight of existence in over mental and mental cognition it is possible to make discrete and even to separate this original unity into three self existent aspects for we can experience a total causeless eternal bliss so intense that we are that alone existence consciousness seem to be swallowed up in it no longer ostensibly in presence a similar experience of pure and absolute consciousness and a similar exclusive identity with it is possible and there can be too a like identifying experience of pure and absolute existence but to a supermind cognition these three are always an inseparable trinity even though one can stand in front of the others and manifest its own spiritual determinates we'll discuss that for each has its primal aspects or its inherent self formations but all of these together are original in the triune absolute love joy and beauty are the fundamental determinates of the divine delight of existence and we can see at once that these are the very stuff and nature of that delight they are not alien impositions on the being of the absolute or creations supported by it but outside it they are truths of its being native to its consciousness power of its force of existence so too is it with the fundamental determinates of the absolute consciousness knowledge and will they are truths and powers of the original consciousness force and are inherent in its very nature this authenticity becomes still more evident when we regard the fundamental spiritual determinates of the absolute existence they are its triune powers necessary first postulates for all its self creation and or manifestation self the divine the conscious being atman ishvara purusha so he will go through each sentence and see what he is saying so our fundamental cognition of the absolute when you go into a spiritual consciousness at its highest you what is your experience of it that's what he is telling you our substantial spiritual experience of it is the intuition or the direct experience of it infinite eternal existence infinite eternal consciousness infinite eternal delight in other words sachid ananda so the fundamental cognition the last reality which you can experience either through intuition you must be thinking that the divine must be like this it's an intuition that comes into the mind or a direct experience you can actually experience this sachid ananda but when you experience it something interesting happens that's what he's saying now okay so and note existence consciousness delight and all he is repeating for stress it is infinite it is eternal it is infinite eternal it is infinite eternal <laughs> he is stressing okay they are not limited and they are not in time okay so in over mental and mental cognition it is possible to make discrete and even to separate the original unity into three self existent aspects so let's understand what he is saying below the super mind in the over mind and also in the mental cognition means the higher mind illumined mind intuitive mind and over mind these he calls the ideal planes or he also calls them the spiritual planes of consciousness in level 2 for our clarity 
we call it level 2 level 1 is what we are we are in the consciousness of the body life and mind and we see the world and for us it is true and we see multiplicity we see the many so now he is saying in this up to the over mind level we can see the many that's what he means by discrete so i'll give you a an image to make it very clear in the super mind you see a whole picture you see the entire reality you come down to the over mind consciousness or even in the super mind there are three grades okay grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 the triple status of the super mind he deals with this so you are seeing the whole picture in the super mind in the lesser level of the super mind you start you are you are a puzzle maker and you cut up that picture into you want to cut it into a jigsaw puzzle okay so you draw the lines where you are going to cut in the third level of the super mind you have cut it but you have not separated it so you still see the whole picture come down into the over mind consciousness and you separate each piece 1 cm okay now are you seeing the picture you are seeing with a little difficulty you go back and you say oh i can see in spite of the 1 cm gap between each one i can see the reality so in the over mind consciousness you can see glimpses of the unity but you can also see the multiplicity at our level the distance of 1 cm between each jigsaw puzzle has gone to 1 meter now you are seeing only the pieces <laughs> interesting image to make yes, you understand yes. this so as you keep going up so we see the jigsaw puzzle and we don't understand what is this part of what is this stone what is the river are they all connected no they don't seem to be connected at all so this is what he is saying and he is using an interesting word he is saying in over mental and mental cognition it is possible to make discrete and even separate the original unity so what does it mean to make discrete <laughs> interesting word he is using to make separate okay so see the distinctions you have to use your discretion in certain matters you have to understand the true from the false <laughs> so he is using the word discrete in a very interesting to make separations in our over mind consciousness and mental consciousness it's possible to make discretion it is possible to make discrete and even to separate the end original unity into three self distinct aspects what are the three self distinct aspects sat chit ananda so existence consciousness and bliss consciousness normally we don't uh, add shakti but that is also possible so he is saying now in this we'll read sentence and then go into it he is saying in the we see them separately so in the spiritual planes of consciousness he is saying that you can experience consciousness alone and when you are experiencing consciousness sat and ananda have got absorbed into it you are not seeing them you are seeing only consciousness discrete then if you go into existence consciousness and ananda are absorbed into it and you see only existence we'll we'll go into existence a little later then when you are in the ananda consciousness ananda consciousness and existence don't seem to exist it is possible to experience fully one aspect only that's what he is saying it is possible but it's also you can have a combination also that also is possible okay so but to super mind consciousness these three are always inseparable unity inseparable trinity sorry they cannot be separated from each other they are completely involved in each other now we'll go a little into that existence okay the existence from the uses the word which is a substance but it's a substance which is very very subtle and when he uses the word substance he means the same stuff which has become gross matter okay so existence is substance and it is a substance which is conscious 
and which is full of ananda and it's also got power and you can experience in the spiritual planes you can experience them separately if you experience that's the next chapter actually if you brahman purusha ishvara maya prakriti shakti so if you experience only existence that is so real to you that the physical world is unreal you end up with the mayavada philosophy the buddhistic philosophy if you experience a consciousness okay the world seems to be mechanical unconscious energy you end up with the sankhya philosophy then if you experience the ananda aspect only then you end up with the theory of the vaishnava vaishnavism leela the world is a play of the divine okay so it's possible that's the reason why there are so many different philosophies <laughs> So in the over mind consciousness, you are seeing some oneness, but you are seeing also the separateness. And so those who have gone only up to the over mind consciousness will deal with the only the experience that they have had. So you have all these experience, all these philosophies, Maya Vada, Buddhism, um, uh, Sankhya, okay, the Lila, Vaishnavism, Advaita philosophy. All these things are. because of the over mind consciousness you go into the super mind consciousness everything is one and all of these philosophies are partially true not a single one is fully wrong they are all partially true it depends at which level you are okay so that's what he's saying so an inseparable trinity in the super mind even though one can stand in front of the others and manifest its own spiritual determinates now he is using the word determinates so a determinate and an indeterminate so let's take two three examples to understand determinate and indeterminate if i take energy it is the indeterminate it does not have a specific form but that energy can become electrical it can become <coughs> bio currents in the body it can become thermal energy it can become nuclear energy so these are the determinates very very clear aspects of that one infinite eternal energy okay or to take a more gross example take the take molten metal okay you take iron ore and put it in a furnace the slag comes out and the iron ore is coming in okay uh, sorry the iron molten met molten iron is coming out okay now that is formless but i can make that into that's a indeterminate because it doesn't have a determinable form now that i can make into plates i can make into wires i can make into railway tracks so the molten metal is the indeterminate and the these things are the determinates so determinate means its characteristics can be described but that you cannot describe the characteristics so the whole universe is like that the highest is the indeterminate and when you come down the first determinates of such things are sat chit ananda they become separate and now each one also becomes infinitely separate so if we melted a form of iron it would become indeterminate again yes that's right so down the line is this process ever ending no it never ends mm. it goes on and on so any one stage if you take the stage above that is the indeterminate and the stage below that is a determinate so itself it can become the indeterminate or the one below okay so this is what the whole chapter is about so the satchananda breaks itself up into the determinates of sat chit ananda in the over mind it's all one indeterminate then now he is telling you that existence can become infinite substances oxygen nitrogen hydrogen iron plutonium uranium uranium uh, thorium anything you want they are all the determinates of the substance then you take consciousness consciousness is divided into knowledge and will and ananda 
divide yourself into he is telling you we'll read that okay so ah, you say love, ananda you, divide yourself into love joy, joy beauty and beauty yes and note interestingly that even in the physical world they are so intimately connected love joy and beauty each one can produce the other if there is love it can produce joy at our level it can also produce a little bit of sorrow also <laughs> but that's another matter okay and it also when you see the beauty of something it, you can love it so this there are three so ananda becomes love joy and beauty are the fundamental determinants of the divine delight of existence and we can see at once that these are the very stuff and nature of the delight they are not alien impositions on the being of the absolute or creation supported by it but outside it it is not like that they are truths of its being native to its consciousness powers of its force of existence this sentence here he is denying the mayavada philosophy the mayavada philosophy says that there is a consciousness which is absolutely pure and featureless and static like the cinema screen okay and the events of the physical world are the images being thrown on the cinema screen so the screen is separate and the images being thrown on the screen are actually separate but you don't see the distinction you are watching the film and you are not even conscious of the screen this is our condition we are seeing the images that's all the forms in the universe and we feel that they are real but the mayavada philosophy says no they are only reflections on a screen the reality is a screen remove the images what remains only the consciousness of the self the brahman consciousness so he is denying here he is saying that's not true he is saying that these things also the determinants are also real all the forms that you see in the physical world are there is a reality behind the apparent form that's what he is saying read that sentence again okay they are not alien impositions on the being of the absolute which one he is talking of love joy and beauty are not they seem to be separate love joy and beauty are fundamental determinants and we can see at once that these are very stuff and nature of the delight they are not alien impositions on the being of the absolute or creation supported by it but outside it is neither that nor this okay he is making a dis- distinction one is impositions on the absolute second possibility creations supported by it but outside it okay that means like the poet and the poem it's not even like that he's saying okay like the artist and his painting they two separate things but essentially they are the same that's what he's saying the world and such and other are essentially the same but what about these alien impositions yeah alien means it has nothing to do with the world the image being thrown on the screen has nothing to do with the screen it's an alien imposition that's what it means so the physical world that you see is an alien imposition upon the screen of your consciousness okay and that's a mayavada philosophy same thing denying so they no see carefully and you will see that they are all connected and all are real but you have to rise to a very high level of consciousness to see that okay so so to is it with the fundamental determinants of the absolute consciousness knowledge and will okay they se- separate themselves into knowledge and will they are truths and powers of the original consciousness force and are inherent in its very nature this authenticity becomes still more evident when we regard the fundamental spiritual determinants of an absolute existence the that it becomes absolutely clear that absolute existence divides itself up first of all into five states ether air fire water earth they are levels of consciousness they are not actually ether air fire water they are only images to make you understand okay that ether means 
very very subtle but that substance can become slightly less subtle air it becomes even more subtle even less subtle fire then water and earth they are all nothing but the substance which is taking different forms so these are the first fundamental five fundamental determinants and each one again separates itself into 100000 things just like life another image also you can take life is indeterminate it produces according to biology and recent research vertebrates and invertebrates okay invertebrates eight groups again vertebrates again five major groups then mammals mammals again can become horses dogs <laughs> cats what not hmm. so different this is what he is saying so now we go to the last sentence they and when we regard the fundamental spiritual life of absolute existence they become even more um, even more striking because when i was at school we used to say that there are 90 elements <laughs> now they have gone to 190 elements they have discovered more and more and they are bound to discover more and more <laughs> pure element not combinations okay stainless steel is a combination zinc is an original product iron is not steel <laughs> steel is a combination of carbon and iron so these pure elements there are 190 you will discover more and more <laughs> so that's what she is saying okay and it goes on there is no end to it na suppose you take carbon it can become coal but it can also become diamond <laughs> diamond is nothing but carbon <laughs> i have a um joke from jyoti priya a diamond is just a piece of coal that stuck to its job yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we don't care so much for the coal but we care very much for <laughs> okay so finally he is saying that the absolute existence is our triune powers necessary first postulates for all its self creation or manifestation self the divine conscious being atman ishvara purusha okay the self is the conscious being and atman purusha ishvara three different levels okay so this is what he said in the para Satchidananda divides himself into three, and each of these three divides themselves again into others. But all of them are real and not alien impositions. They are all real. Mahavadins are saying they are not real. Buddhists are saying they are not real. But he sticks to this that they are all there is a connection and there is a gradation. But reality is not compromised. Okay. If we pursue the process of self manifestation farther we shall see that each of these aspects or powers reposes in its first action on a triad or trinity for knowledge inevitably takes its stand in a trinity of the knower the known and knowledge love finds itself in a trinity of the lover the beloved and love will is self fulfilled in a trinity of the lord of the will the object of the will and the executive force joy has its original and utter gladness in a trinity of the enjoyer the enjoyed and the delight that unites them self is inevitably sorry self as inevitably appears and founds its manifestation in a trinity of self as subject self as object and self awareness holding together self as subject object okay 
the subject is looking at the object and the connection between them is the third element these and other primal powers and aspects assume their status among the fundamental spiritual self determinations of the infinite okay all others are determinates of the fundamental spiritual determinates significant relations significant powers significant forms of being consciousness force delight energies conditions ways lines of the truth process of the conscious force of the eternal imperatives possibilities actualities of its manifestation all this deploying of powers and possibilities and their inherent consequences is held together by supermind cognition in an intimate oneness it keeps them founded consciously on the original truth and maintained in the harmony of the truths they manifest and are in their nature there is here no imposition of imaginations no arbitrary creation neither is there any division fragmentation irreconcilable contrariety or disparateness but in mind of ignorance these phenomena appear for there a limited consciousness sees and deals with everything as if it were all separate objects of cognition or separate existences and it seeks so to know possess and enjoy them and gets mastery over them or suffers their mastery but behind its ignorance what the soul in it is seeking for is the reality the truth the consciousness the power the delight by which they exist the mind has to learn to awaken to this true seeking and true knowledge veiled within itself to the reality from which all things hold their truth to the consciousness of which all consciousness are entities to the power from which all get what force of being they have within them to the delight of which all delights are partial figures this limitation of consciousness and this awakening to the integrality of consciousness are also a process of self manifestation are a self determination of the spirit even when contrary to the truth in their appearances the things of the limited consciousness have in their deeper sense and reality a divine significance they too bring out a dream, uh, truth sorry they too bring out a truth or a possibility of the infinite of some such nature as far as it can be expressed in mental formulas would be the supermental cognition of things which sees the one truth everywhere and would so arrange its account to us for our existence its report of the secret of creation and the significance of the universe hmm. huge para and he is saying that everything starts from one becomes the many the many are not the falsehood they are also the truths this is basically what he is saying now this idea of determinate and indeterminate while reading i got another idea so we'll discuss that also a little bit it will help to understand this process of one becoming the many so <clears throat> take a human cell we are all human beings and we have in us flesh bones okay we have cartilage we have light sensitive retina we have nail so many different types of substances in the body but we have started from one single cell that one single cell when it is fertilized okay the ovary from the is when it is fertilized by the sperm it starts dividing itself it divides itself into two first then it goes by geometric progression and the two become four and the four become eight eight become 16 16 become 32 etc now at what point does bone tissue appear muscle tissue appear light sensitive retina tissue appear nail tissue appear at what point there is a point when it starts appearing that is what you call the 
stem cell is the word so that stem cell is now in a condition where it can take any form it wants so if you take that stem cell and put it with bone it will develop into bone tissue if you take that and put it with muscle tissue it will become muscle tissue so the one becoming the many and slowly slowly there is muscle tissue there is bone tissue there is cartilage tissue there is nail tissue there is light sensitive tissue cartilage so many different types of thing is the stem cell making it or joining with it what ah uh, it becomes it i mean this is a biological question but uh, i'm not an expert in that stem cell is power to make anything ha but they they don't actually do that because when you take a stem cell and use it to for experiment you are destroying a life so that's a problem there is amount of research being done there is i think limited i'm not sure of what i'm saying but i think this is what i've read okay okay so it's a very big one but basically this is the how it happens the one becoming the many and all of them are connected and it's a very very logical system and you can see what is it start looking at the beginning if we look into each sentence because i feel that to read sri aurobindo you have to use you have to understand his use of words because a word is a word but what is meant by that word if you go into carefully detail then you start uh, to understand what he is saying so we start looking at it if we pursue the process of self manifestation further he means the one becoming the many which is self manifestation self manifestation why self because itself it is becoming what it is in the case of a an artist producing a painting the essence of it is self manifestation but the painting is not the painter <laughs> so but here he is saying the world is nothing but the manifestation of the self itself it molds itself into all these things it's not taking a foreign material and making something that's what he means by self manifestation when a company is making a mobile it is taking material from outside and making it okay but here the divine is using his own material and creating that's why self manifestation okay the word self is very meaningful we have to understand exactly what he is saying i give you an example of what is not self manifestation you take a a metal piece which is not you and make it into a vessel but it is not self manifestation it is manifested but different <laughs> but here it is self manifestation the world is nothing but self manifestation of the divine if we pursue the process of self manifestation further we shall see that each of these aspects or powers reposes in its first action on a triad or trinity and he is giving examples for knowledge inevitably takes its stand in a trinity of the knower the known and knowledge all three are connected but different so clear so very clear that's right okay so knowledge divides itself into knower known and knowledge similarly love finds itself in a trinity of the lover the beloved and love <laughs> okay so none of them are really the same but they have come from the same source and become these three will is self fulfilled in a trinity of the lord of the will the object of the will and the executive force the willer the willed and the will <laughs> if you want to make it very obvious okay then joy has its original and utter gladness in a trinity of the enjoyer the enjoyed and the delight that unites them okay so self as inevitably appears and founds its manifestation in a trinity of self as subject self as object 
and self awareness holding together self as subject object okay so self as subject is clear i am the subject self as object i am watching myself i can watch my thoughts i can watch my emotions so i am watching myself my emotions my thoughts are myself so so um, inevitably i best found is self as subject self as object and self awareness holding together self as subject object these and other primal powers and aspects assume their status among the fundamental spiritual self determinations of the infinite this is what happens in the the indeterminate and determinate all others are determinates of the fundamental spiritual determinates so what are the fundamental spiritual determinates sat chit ananda each one becomes again three that is said okay so now he says it can go into further divisions and what are those divisions look carefully okay so one second all other are determinates of the fundamental spiritual data yeah of determinants significant relations significant powers significant forms of being consciousness force delight so again he is coming to being is sat consciousness is chit force is shakti and delight is ananda energies conditions ways lines of the truth process of the conscious force of the eternal now imperatives possibilities actualities of its manifestation so now whatever is possible is being created some of these things which are created are imperatives they become absolute realities in the physical world some are possibilities kept over for some future hmm <laughs> and actualities which have already come into existence so the imperatives is the highest it is bound to become then the next one is the possibility that imperative can become two things so they are possibilities then the possibility becomes an actuality <laughs> so there also you can see a gradation na no? so actuality is the manifestation all this deploying of powers and possibilities not the word deploying when a, an army has to fight a battle the general says okay 100 soldiers i'll send here 100 soldiers i'll send here 200 here and there is deploying so this deploying is one army being separated into different units the word deploying means exactly that okay so he in fact they use the word deploy even uh, for military purposes also is used that the powers and possibilities of their inherent consequences is held together by supermind but all these things although they are separate in the supermind they are all one that's what is saying so possibilities imperatives possibilities actualities now this is highly interesting sri ramdu says in 1920 india is going to be free imperative didn't he say mother told mother saw it he said mother saw that india was free yeah now imperative but the possibility that india will not become akhand bharat but it will split into pakistan india and bangladesh finally that's the actuality is interesting the imperative is yes india will be free okay seen 30 years before the sexual appearance that's the imperative then the possibility could it be into two or could it be into one okay hmm. and finally the actuality it became even three now there is a possibility if you are following the latest trends what is happening all these will again come back into one okay and they coming into one need not be a physical unity but it could be in the form of a a federation or a like the eu 
European Union. All the countries are different. But there is no fundamental difference. There are no borders. There are no customs duties. There is one currency. So that sort of unity is also likely here. In fact, the starting point is already there, SARC. South Asian Association of Regional Countries. SARC. So it could become like that. Which would also be mother's map. <laughs> yes, that's right. In fact, already this thing has started. It's going into a little politics I should not discuss. But it's very relevant to what we are seeing here. Okay, uh, Pakistan occupied uh, Kashmir is already demanding freedom from Pakistan. Uh, Baluchistan also is uh, doing the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sri Lanka is not on the verge. It has collapsed. Mm -hmm. And Pakistan is about to collapse. Yeah. <laughs> so, actualities. <laughs> Okay, so very interesting. You know the word, the huh? imperatives, possibilities, actualities of its manifestation. All this deep lying of powers and possibilities and their inherent consequences is held together by supermind cognition in an intimate oneness. It keeps them founded consciously on the original truth and maintained in the harmony of the truths they manifest and are in their nature. There is here no imposition of imaginations, no arbitrary creation, neither is there any division, fragmentation, irreconcilable contrariety or disparateness. In the supermind, there is no division and no imposition and no imagination, but in the spiritual planes of consciousness, you do seem to think that there is, they are different. There is a consciousness and the actualities are being imposed on it. That's what he's saying. So depending on which level you are. But if you are at the supermental level, there is only oneness and all these are together. Trikala Drishti. You see the mm. past, present and the future. You see the future also. That's why Sayyidina could see that. No? That the India will be free. <laughs> And mother said, India is not, will be free. It is already free in the subtle world. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, no imagine, irreconcilable. But, in mind of ignorance, these phenomena appear. What are the phenomena? Possibilities, actualities, differences. Na? So, all the phenomena appear. For, there is a limited conscious, for there, sorry, for there, a limited consciousness sees and deals with everything as if all were separate objects of cognition or separate existences and it seeks so to know, possess and enjoy them and get mastery over them or suffer their mastery. Hmm. He is talking about human condition. Okay, We try to master the floods, the storms, but they are mostly mastering us. <laughs> we suffer their consequences. So that's what he's saying. It becomes like this in the physical world. Okay? So man sees them as separate and tries to understand, know and possess. He doesn't see the oneness of things. That's the whole point. These phenomena appear. For there is a limited consciousness. For there, the limited consciousness sees, deals with everything as if they were separate objects of cognition. In other words, there is no separateness at all in reality. They are all one. Just like all of us are sitting here, our bodies are all seeming to be separate, but they are essentially the same. There is flesh, bone, tissue everywhere, all of them. The oneness is there, inherent. But we don't see it. That's what he's saying. You go to the higher level of consciousness, you will see the oneness. So this world is perfect. Pardon? This world is perfect from that vision. Depending, yeah, from that vision. That's right. <laughs> so, no possess and enjoy them and gets mastery over them or suffers their mastery. But behind its ignorance, what the soul in it is seeking is for the reality, the truth, the consciousness, the power, the delight. So, all of us 
Sometimes they are seeking only reality, sometimes truth, sometimes consciousness. Some people are asking for power, some for delight by which they exist. The mind has to learn to awaken to this true seeking and true knowledge veiled within itself. To the reality from which all things hold their truth, to the consciousness of which all consciousnesses are entities, to the power from which all get what force of being they have within them, to the delight of which all delights are partial figures. This limitation of consciousness and this awakening to the integrality of consciousness are also a process of self-manifestation, are a self-determination of the spirit. Even when contrary to the truth in their appearances, the things of the limited consciousness have in their deeper sense and reality a divine significance. So what he's saying is that everything in the physical world has a divine significance. Even in their opposite, huh? note, even when contrary to the truth in their appearances. In other words, he's saying that falsehood also has a purpose. And truth is there. There is generosity and there is miserliness. Both have a purpose in the physical world. Okay? Truth and untruth. Uh, <clears throat> error and no error. Both have got... Truth and error are both also necessary for the world. Light and darkness are both necessary for the world. He's saying they have their significance. We can understand to a certain extent mentally, we can say that if there is only light, okay, we won't give enough value to it. Only if there is darkness, we know what light is. Okay? And if there is falsehood and you feel the falsehood, you will want to have truth. If there is no falsehood, you will be static. You won't try to progress. Mm. So that's why this is the purpose that is there, he is talking about. Okay? of some such nature as far as it can be expressed in mental formulas would be the supramental cognition of things which sees the one truth everywhere and would so arrange its account to us of our existence, its report of the secret of creation and the significance of the universe. So when you go to the supramental level, all the contraries, the problems are solved. At the moral level, we want to go from falsehood to truth, from ignorance to knowledge. We want to go from inconscience to consciousness. But there is a purpose to it. Here we deny the purpose of all these negatives. But there you see the purpose. You see everything and you understand the origin of creation and you also understand why all these things exist in the physical world. It's report. It's report. Yeah. It's a report of the secret of creation and the significance of the universe. In other words, when you go there, the secret is revealed to you. It reports to you the significance of the universe. That's what it means.